Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray here. Super excited to be here on this day to be talking about my favorite subject in the world, music. One of the things that I love about being a composer and producer in the modern era is that you have to be versatile. If you want to monetize your music and you want to do this for a living, there are a lot of different outlets out there. But if you really want to maximize, it's best to diversify your income streams. And so one of the things that I've had to do, even though I don't have a background in the orchestra, I didn't go to school for music, I've been studying it my whole life and I love it to this very day. It's all I want to do, but I still had to figure out a way to do the orchestra, if you will, without necessarily having that background. And so this video is for those of you that are interested in perhaps implementing strings, woodwinds, brass into your productions, but you don't know how to approach it. You see, earlier this year, I was hired by a TV station to give a couple of seminars on what we do as modern composers and producers. And I was able to start really delving deep into the subject of the orchestra and started breaking it down into bite-sized portions. And so this video here is for those of you that are ready to assimilate and understand the orchestra, but to interpret it for today's world. So with that being said, let me show you the clip that we will be studying and researching. And bear in mind, this is something that I wrote in a hotel room on a laptop. So it's amazing what you can create if you just have a good foundational understanding of what you will need. Here we go. Okay, I think you understand where I'm going with this. So here is what we're trying to do, team. We are trying to understand all the various elements of the orchestra. So if we start with rhythm, percussive elements, we're talking cymbals, snares, any form of triangles, uh, you know, the tubular bell, if you know what that sounds like. This is very prevalent in the orchestra, also in hip hop. The timpani, really, really important to kind of set up the, 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 the tone of the orchestra, like where is it rooted? Again, to extend on that, taiko drums. I believe these are like Asian, Japanese sounding drums. Check them out. And so what I do here is I combine them with the rhythmic taiko, which sounds like this. And together, okay, so what else do we got here? I have a bell. I guess you could consider this an anvil bell. And this is played in triplets. Another part of the orchestra, if you really want to understand how to get it to work, is you got to understand some of the basics of rhythm. What's an eighth note, a quarter note, a sixteenth note? Right? How do you get drums to sound good together? And so, as you can hear with the drums in general, they have a lot of different rhythms. So here, for example, when the, the taikos are playing these 16th notes. Um, actually, I believe this is a hi-hat or something like that. Yeah, it's a kind of percussive element. It's just not named properly. I used the logic feature note repeat to record that in. What else we got here? I'm accenting the taikos on, looks like the ones. See, there, there's there's a conglomerate of different ideas going on here. You've know, got the accented taikos. Then I've got the snare drum up here. And then for those of you that are looking at the piano saying, well, the piano is not a percussion. Actually, in the orchestra, it is considered a percussive element as you have to strike it in order to get sound from it. But again, it doesn't really matter how you do it so long as the music sounds awesome. That is the barometer um, if you're doing it right. So here are all the uh, percussion elements put together. <laughs> So if I take out the anvil, which is playing those triplets, where is it? Is it this guy? 
uh, hold on. All right, you're hearing a snare that sounds extremely saturated, overly done, overly cooked. But in the context of the mix, it actually works quite well. Check it out. Of course, you could also put that down. The idea is that you get a different texture. I felt like I had a lot of transients, so I needed something that felt a little bit different. Check this out. So that is another part of getting this right, is creating different textures, panning you know, things to the left, panning things to the right. Group processing, I think, is really important as well. If you want to move stuff out of the way, EQing certain elements, that's also very important. So we got the drums covered, more or less. Timpanis are usually playing uh, one and fives. So whatever the root note is, so let's say it's in the key of C, then the, the fifth will be the G. Right, so check this out. So all of this was MIDI before, except I bounced things to audio in order to kind of manage the session. Let's move on to the strings. So I think what really works well, especially when you're starting, is to have a combination of ensemble strings. So here for contact, I'm using... Let's see, I believe I'm using either, yeah, the orchestra. And so that's just playing a sustained note that sounds like this. Okay, and that's just mimicking what the piano is doing up here. So chord progression is C, E to G sharp, right? Good, and here I'm not relying on the bass. I'm just looking for that majestic quality that you get with the strings. So then now I have a cello doubling that. Now listen to how warm it gets without it. Hang tight, without it. So I'm doing my best to fill out the stereo spectrum, the left and the right speaker, right? Okay, then now we get into 16th notes. And so then we don't want ensemble anymore. We want to start isolating the various parts of the orchestra. So we have the violins, second violins, the violas, and the uh, cellos, and then the contrabass or the bass. And so we want to try and get as many of these elements to create that, that sonic sphere. Okay, so here are sixteenth notes. So that's pretty basic. Got the second violins playing on the other side from what I remember. Here we go. You can see that I'm just playing half notes here. One, three, one, and then at the very end, I match up with the 16th notes. So it doesn't have to be that hard so long as you know what to look for. The violas, filling out the song, making it a little bit warmer as well. Oh, and by the way, I'm also adding harmonic variation here. Check this out. So that does a lot by way of just adding some interest. Of course, it, it doesn't have to be complicated, but if you add a little bit of variety, it really will make it thicker and just more interesting overall. Okay, so now that's really starting to work. You're starting to feel the anticipation. And then I've got some eighth note strings, which is like my favorite. This reminds me of, you know, like rock and roll, playing some like, uh, you know, palm muted guitars. Here, check this out. Just always sounds so like rock, punk rock to me. Check it out. 
In fact, for those of you that actually grew up playing rock or metal, you have such an advantage because the orchestra tends to lend itself well to that style. So just remember, at the very top, you've got the violin, second violin, viola, you got the cello, then you have the contrabass at the bottom. Or if you think about like a, like a chorale, right? You have the soprano, alto, tenor, ba bass, so that's S-A-T-B. And so that's another way that you can think about it. They're broken up in the same exact way. And the same thing goes for the brass. At the top, I use the ensemble, and then I'll bring in, the top is the trumpet, and then you have the trombone, then you have the French horn, and then you have the tuba. So what I'm trying to do is create a system for you so you can manage the the workload. I know for me, sometimes bandwidth is an issue. You know, I'm learning Melodyne, and I'm learning this other plugin, and I just picked up Arcade, and I'm, I'm figuring out how to use that by output, right? And so sometimes you just need a system to get you across. Um, again, I didn't grow up writing this kind of music, but I understand music. I feel it in my heart, feel it in my bones, and I know what to do when I get there. So here is the ensemble. It's just mimicking the, the root. Here's the trumpet. Pretty basic. We got another trumpet. Here I'm using the Logic stock. I didn't really feel a need to use anything that was of a higher caliber, or higher, higher quality. To be honest, sometimes these are just fillers. They're just filling in the space and you're adding new textures. So up to this point, I don't have this kind of texture. And so it just sounds really good in the mix. Here, check it out like this. All right, some more trumpets. And so these are of a higher quality. You can see I'm using contact. All right, what else we got here? Eighth notes, apparently. The trombone. So that's starting to introduce a different rhythm. So polyrhythms, again, also very important. So French horn is now mimicking the root note, and then we have the tuba at the bottom, which is just playing what the trombone was playing earlier. Again, the whole song. Okay, so up to this point, I don't really have a melody. I have... The ground, I have the, the background, if you will, but I need something in the foreground or in the front. And hence, I chose a piccolo, but not just any piccolo, uh, a flute, rather, but I chose a piccolo. And you can see here on track number 31 that I've got just the melody, and then I changed the articulation in order to get a sense of realism. Check this out. So sometimes you can play that in isolation and it sounds out of context, but again, in the mix, it's going to sound very different, okay? It's good to get that kind of human variation. As I was saying before, with systematizing the orchestra at the top, you've got your, your flutes. Then right below that, you've got your oboe. Um, then you have the clarinet and bassoon. I actually think that the order of this is wrong. I believe it's like this. You've got the flutes on top. Then you have the clarinet. Yeah, this sounds right. Then you have the oboe and then the bassoon. You're going to want to check on that. Um, actually, no, it, it, it should be like this. And the only reason I remember this is because the viola is kind of like the, you know, the, uh, the stepchild uh, of the string family. And so in the same way, I remember the oboe is also kind of the stepchild of the woodwind. So anyway, go ahead and clarify on that. The whole point is that you can group these instruments together and use them. So I've got the flutes playing a unique melody on top. The oboe, I'm pretty sure, is just following the root. Let's check it out. So you're kind of playing something that's a little bit different than this, right? Well, not really counter melody. It's really complementing it, but it's um, it's kind of a supplementary melody. It's kind of playing different notes and it weaves in and out. And so that's a kind of an interesting idea. Let's check out this clarinet. I think this is the counter melody. Could be wrong. Let's check out. So 
So actually, yep, it's all kind of playing to the strength of the flute. We've got the bassoon down here. So again, with the rest of the elements. Finally, to wrap your head around the orchestra, you are going to need some plucked stringed instruments. You could think guitar, nylon string, a, a harp, a zither, and there's there's more in this family, but I just chose the harp. I'm using an arpeggiator, just playing the chord out. And then just to complement that, I added a zither. So all together. Okay, cool. Look, I am actually in the process of creating a course that's very extensive where I break down these elements further. I just thought this would be useful for anybody trying to wrap their head around this. I know for me it took me years and it's still a constant study. There's just so many ideas. There's counterpoint, right? You've got um, harmony, which is kind of a life study in and of itself. And so if you just kind of keep it simple to start out, I'm encouraging you to make the music that you need to make. You don't have to wait, right? Some of the things you can learn right away, scales, modes, and inversions. These are things that you can learn in a weekend if you wanted to. So anyway, keep fighting the good fight, keep learning, keep growing, keep evolving every day. That's the key, guys. You got to do it every single day. Look, I was never able to write music like this. This, was, this would have been impossible years ago, but with a... Uh, a conviction and a belief in yourself you could do anything that you want to do so i'm going to sign out thank you guys very much for watching if you're interested in what we do check us out at hfmusicacademy.com go ahead and smash the share button smash the subscribe button and i will see you on the next one take care